get his how out. <laughs> The Pow Wow with Mo podcast. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the second episode of the Pow Wow with Mo podcast. I am Pow Wow. This is Mo. Uh, we are going to have a few topics today. Uh, Mo, you want to start out with the first one? Yeah, I think every week we should start with the kind of current events or what's happening or random things that have caught our attention. Uh, so I think the first main thing that happened this week or a couple or deaths, Tom Petty died. I personally love Tom Petty and I don't even really like rock music, but I love some Tom Petty. I have to give respect. And then, uh, Ralphie May. Was, I know. I seen that on last comic standing. I know he was super, very funny. surprising, but he was very unhealthy. Yeah. I mean, I think he had a heart attack or <laughs> got a pneumonia. One of the two, maybe a combination. It's terrible. Uh, so, um, basically I'm going to go to crack.com, which is one of my favorite websites to pull up these random stories they had of things that happened through the week. Uh, so one I noticed here is that in France, they have passed a new law that requires Photoshopped models or pictures to be labeled. So if they Photoshop really? their bodies, faces, any of that, they have to label it somewhere that it has been touched up. So like you have to have this card saying that... This is a, a fake picture? Basically. I think their goal would be they would just stop it all together. So they're trying to stop catfishing and any uh Right. Well, they surprises. say it's uh, to quit the body shaming and uh, you know unrealistic expectations. Um, and it might work. I, we'll see. Uh, I don't think that'll ever happen in America. Never. Uh, but maybe. We use that all the time. Um, another one I noticed is there was an Indiana couple who stole millions of dollars worth of electronics from Amazon by taking f- advantage of their return policy. So if you get a broken item, item from Amazon, you don't always have to return it. So they were just ordering electronics under different names, and then they would call Amazon and say this was broke, and they would send them a replacement, and they never sent back the originals, and then they w- were selling the replacements they were sending them. So they made millions of dollars, and now they have to pay back Amazon, and they're getting sued for mail fraud. So how long how long does it take for you to realize that these... Because I'm assuming you went to the same house. Or at least in the same area. Like, you're like mean, okay, this block has P- got $2 million in returns this year. Maybe we should look <laughs> at who's delivering it. That's, that's crazy. Right. I mean, I say more props to them for getting away with it for so long, but they did uh, totally totally get caught there i mean maybe stop after a little bit and then i don't know that's that just seems like a terrible decision all right is there uh anything that you've want to bring up about that's happened recently uh yeah i did see where the saudi arabia passed a new law that will start allowing women to drive Uh oh (laughs) there's some sort of uh accomplishment there I bet though that traffic's not as bad. So not <laughs> not because of the women driving, just the like half the population doesn't drive, just on numbers alone. But for sure, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I am glad because we had this discussion at work if it was a big deal, and no one thought it was a big deal. Well, also, I mean, if they haven't driven for this long, you think how many really people bad? are gonna be like, oh, I've been ready for this my whole life? I mean, I'm sure there are some outliers of people who or women who have learned to drive. But is it like now everyone 16 through 65 is lining up at their DMV to get <laughs> license? year old first time. Yeah, I just man, I like if I had to learn today, I don't know if I would even do it. I mean, at 15, you have all this excitement right to get your permit and learn it all. Now I'd be like, oh, if I made it this long, if they have I'll state farm, out. someone should become an insurance agent real quick. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, oh, I did notice that Jackie Chan said Rush Hour 4 can happen if Chris Tucker agrees. Of course he's going to agree. He doesn't do anything relevant <laughs> in the last well, 10 years. Rush Hour 3 sucked. Yes. But apparently like $250 million, so I'm sure They're just gonna make it. they'll just make another one <laughs> just to make the money. I mean, Honestly, for me, Rush Hour 3, the most I know about it is it was in one of the later seasons of Entourage. Because Johnny really? Drama is trying to get a role... And he goes oh, to the director's house and mm-hmm. gets a massage from some person. And he just kind of hangs out until he forces them to give him a role in the movie. But I never saw Rush Hour 3, so I can't really say it's bad, I guess. 
I just heard it was really bad. It, it wasn't. I, I watched it with my sister, and it wasn't the best at all. And uh, also, um, today at the 49ers and Colts game, you have Mike Pence that left immediately after the national anthem um, due to some players protesting. And Trump, of course, takes credit for it, saying that he told Mike Pence that if they don't stand up and they are disrespecting the flag or the military, then to go ahead and leave. Well, to me, this was all premeditated for sure. because he knew someone was going to. So he literally, like, I bet if you look at his daily planner, he had a he had, <laughs> he had appointment scheduled already? towards the end of that game easily. Like, he showed up just to make a point that I'm going to leave once this happens, in my opinion. Like, that's how I see that worked. I guess he just needs to cont- consistently stay in the news. Um, do see here on BuzzFeed on CNN that Donald Trump just claimed that he invented fake news. Uh... Sure, a lot of things he says is fake, so I guess in a way, but people have been saying fake news. I think he popularized the term definitely. Um, I would highly <laughs> recommend, uh, if anyone has HBO Go or HBO in general, Viceland, their recent little news program, looked at fake news and post-truth news is kind of what I think they called it. Super fascinating. Um, they're way smarter than me, so I'm not going to try to try to butcher what they did. Um Also here, uh, it looks like the writer behind the Fifty Shades of Grey film is going to be writing the Venom movie. So I don't know if you knew Venom was going to have its own movie. I did, yes. Uh, Tom Hardy is going to be Venom, but I guess comic fans are worried that they're going to sex it up too much. And my whole thing is, the person who wrote the script did not write the books. That's a different person. And movie writers write all kinds of different movies all the time. So, like, for you to think, like, me, like, oh, they're going to have Venom in bondage and sex and other people. Like, that's clearly not, <laughs> not what gonna they're going to do. Let's see. Also, in news, we have, I'm sure you've heard of this, where Jerry Ross is basically addicted to weddings. I have not. Oh, okay. So, apparently, like, once a week, Jerry Ross goes to a wedding. So, he goes golfing on these at these resorts. And if there is a wedding nearby, Jerry Ross will crash the wedding, wedding crasher style. Um show off his dance moves from Dancing with the Stars and photo ops with everybody. Um, in one account that I'd heard earlier this week. Why didn't I get that opportunity? <laughs> right. Just come by. <laughs> right. And so that's the thing is I think most people are fine with it. But in one of the accounts of it, the bride's mother was kissing Jerry Ross and the dad was okay with it when him when he was asked about it. So... I really just imagine it more like, you know, the movie Wedding Crashers. Like, yeah. it's him and his friends, and they're like, oh, right, there's our story. <laughs> Except he just goes with, I'm Jerry Rice, and just doesn't have to make something up. Oh, it's so good. He's, let's have a pickup game, guys. Right. <laughs> um, and then I also saw where Jared Leto is going to be Hugh Hefner in a new biopic that they're already filming. The dude's really? been dead, like, one week. And they've already got a movie set up, for sure. Same, like, the whole Steve Jobs thing. Yep. And Jared Leto's great. I really like Hugh Hefner's whole story or whatever, so I'm sure it'll be good. Uh, it just never ceases to amaze me how quickly people will make movies about people who just died. People have to make money. They just want to make it as quickly as possible. They don't care anyone's feelings about it. And then... Uh, the last thing I guess I wanted to mention, or actually there is another one now I thought about it, but uh, Fox Sports stated, I didn't even pay attention today if they did it, um, that they're not going to show the national anthem on their TV screens. They're still going to discuss it afterwards. They're just not going to show you the protests. So let's not show the protests, but let's still talk about these people afterwards, even it's though like not showing the national anthem. Protest appropriation. <laughs> Only Fox News. Well, I mean, then they can just claim whatever they want, and there's no video evidence, at least for you as the viewer to see immediately, to know if they're telling the truth or not. That's their plan. You can't prove us wrong. Right. Except for, you know, all the other stations that are also viewing it at the same time. <laughs> right. So, and I mean, you know, they're protesting America, obviously, in the military, so they got to do what you have to do. I'm, I'm just so over this. It's, it's ridiculous, man. All right, so the last thing I definitely want to bring up, and if you have anything else, you definitely do it after this. Um, did you see where Donald Trump dedicated a golf trophy to hurricane victims? You're shitting me. All right, so he's at a... I'm trying to remember exactly where it was at, but he was at some, maybe one of his golf 
resorts. Um, and there's a trophy to the winner, and, and he goes up on the podium and goes, I want to dedicate this trophy uh, to everyone in Puerto Rico that was affected by Hurricane Maria. Not like, oh, we're going to help you we get electricity, help you food, gas. I mean, he did say he's going to, you know, wipe out their debt. Which we should have done before this because it was crazy. But it was like two days later, Congress goes, no, we, <laughs> we, we, that's, no, we can't do that. Apparently that's what's holding them up from becoming a state is they have, they have all this debt. But then if we made them a state, they would inherit part of our national debt. And they, they don't want to do that. And then we don't want to do it because we don't want – it's, it's a, a whole thing. Yeah, I don't – I mean – I, I need to look it up, but it's either seven hundred and fifty million or seven hundred fifty thousand. I assume it's million because what's a million dollars? Someone could just pay that off, right? Um, well, and I'm sure you saw where him and the mayor, maybe it was the governor of Puerto Rico or the mayor of that city, where they kind of got into. They had a little feud. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. All right, anything else going on currently that uh, you need to mention here? No, nothing this week, man. I. I'll be honest, I have been a uh, family man all week long. I have not paid much attention to the news as much as I should have. Was but, there any family news going on? Anything crazy happening at home? <laughs> There's always crazy stuff, but um, my little nephew just turned uh, five years old. Uh, Cohen went to his birthday party. That was pretty sweet. Um, but other than that, man, it's just a yeah. typical native family. Well, what I learned this week it was editing a podcast – is that it's a little tougher than I thought it would be. Get a little echoes here and there. So the first episode doesn't sound perfect, but I think it'll get better. Uh, made an intro, which everyone should have heard at the beginning of this. Um, and then Dope I reached shit. out to a producer friend of mine named Mike Ford, who said he's going to try out. to get us some beats to use on future episodes. So look out for that. Also, if uh, anyone out there has questions or things you would like for us to discuss, uh, shoot us an email. Uh, the powwow with mo at gmail.com. That is T H E P O W W O W W I T H M O at gmail.com. So mo does not have an E. All right. Spelling champ. So, our first topic that we're going to do is going to be it. We plan on doing a top five list every week. Uh, if we can keep that up, we already have the next few lined up that we want to do. Went with the hardest first. Go with top five favorite television shows. Super difficult. Um, we didn't want it to be the best, top five best of anything, because, you know, it's all opinion. So we're going to go with top five favorite. I think I left some off my list that I knew you would have just to make it easier on myself. Um, so just a shout out to a couple that I did not include, but could have definitely. Um, I love Dexter. Didn't include it. Uh, I think Fargo has the its second season is the best season of anything ever. I just don't love the third season, so I didn't want to put it on here. Uh, the Wire is amazing. I the just Wire is good, man. Haven't watched in a while, and honestly, when you go back and watch it, it's so old school with their computers and <laughs> wiretapping that it's like it is really good, uh, but a little weird. Uh, Friday Night Lights could have easily been in my top five. I just had to make cuts. The OC, which the is OC, probably man. It I know it was like a chick flick TV series. Oh, man, I love those. But it was great. Uh, Boardwalk Empire, Shameless, Big Bang Theory, Masters of Sex, Halt and Catch Fire. Um, and some other ones that I left off just because there's not enough of it yet. So Atlanta, I love the first season, but the second season could suck. Could. So like anything that has one or less seasons. Like True Detective. True Detective, right. Season one was great after that, not so much. Uh, I'm currently watching The Deuce on HBO. Would, has James Franco in two roles. I highly recommend it. You should definitely watch it. James Franco, yeah. I'm a fan. Um, Broad City I love but didn't include. Silicon Valley, Weeds. Um, the Get Down on Netflix only had one season and it got canceled, but it's like an amazing first season. But I felt like I couldn't put that either. Um, so really there's going to be a bunch of stuff I wanted to put. But we couldn't? just couldn't do it if we had I to understand. get it down to five. And honestly, my top five, there it's probably even wrong. It's probably not even correct for my top five. You just had a we had a week to do it, and it was it was tough to do. I mean, I, I know with mine the first two I, I got those down pat, but agreed. I mean, I had some that I had to leave off. Vikings, um, love that show. I cut my hair like Ragnar Lothbrok. Huge fan. Who was first though? Was it you or Ragnar? Or you or you watching that show? Me I watching was, that. It was me watching that show. 
I mean, I didn't have it grown out that length, but I had cut it that style, and then just yeah. now it's that length. Um, How I Met Your Mother, another one that I I was a huge fan of. I mean, I remember we watched it at the apartment quite often. Right. Um, Sons of Anarchy was it was a great show, man. It. I never there watched the last. There's some cringe moments. I have to I have to go back someday. Um. Yeah, but it's it's real good. And then True Blood, I was really into the first like three seasons. And then just kind of fell off, but I felt like uh, I was dedicated to it right. every Sunday. Um, I mean, I guess other shops have to get Masters of None or Master yeah. of None on Netflix is really good. Parenthood is the only television show that made me cry. Tearjerker for sure. Yeah. It hits right in the feels. It's real, real good, um, but I did not include that one either. So. And then Chuck, man. I, I know you watched it, and then you – I just – when I started watching it, I was addicted. Yeah, see, for me, it was like uh, – Oh, this is fun, but it was never like I have to watch the next episode. So I mean, it really wouldn't make like my list, but it was it was all right. Yeah, I didn't hate it. And then one that I, I when I was writing it down, it verbatim was wrote down like this: I want to add Lost, but I just can't. See, I had Lost on my top five list at one point in time, but and I mean it's, it's still arguing could be because I mean I will watch it now, like on a random day. I'm like, let's start season three of Lost, right? Or whatever. Now it gets a lot of shit because. They didn't have a plan, and we all thought they had a plan. We did. And then the the one theory I'll try to turn it that everyone guessed after the first season ends up being what mm-hmm. they went with at the end. If you can even understand the last episode, uh, they start flashing sideways and forward that, and back well, and forward and back. At least I could kind of make sense of that the flashing sideways, like, oh, is this what actually happened? And, and then, then they the, release. But then a, the island jumps when Daniel Faraday jumps on it, and I just it right. gets a little a little intense. It's right. But it's good. I mean, it is. I, it's good. If you need something to watch, it's great. It's the last mega produced show that like it looks like a movie when you're watching it. For um, sure. People, I don't think spend that much money on TV shows anymore. So it is great. It's just the story is kind of crazy. It is. I mean, I, I just remember Marshall all the time. You're going to die, brother. <laughs> yeah. All the time. He would not stop. Him and John Mark. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, right. man. Well, you want to so, kick off your top five? Um, sure. I'll go my number five. Um. I went with the Goldbergs. Good pick. I mean, it, they you've mentioned it quite often. They don't get they, they don't get any enough. Love. They don't get any love. I've never seen them nominated for anything or anyone be like, oh, that's a great show. Everyone talks about Modern Family, which comes on afterwards. And Modern Family is pretty good. I mean, I think it's but really well To me, written. Goldbergs is, right. is and moving up there. Goldbergs is, I mean, I'll be the first. Like, it probably actually is in my fifth favorite TV show. It's just that it's really good. <laughs> it's um, so good. It's one I I'll, love Barry, man. I right. Just, Barry's Barry great. kills it. Uh, I mean, I will watch episode after episode if I have them all, you know, download oh, yeah. or whatever. Easily. Uh, so I just, I really want to give it some love. I think Beverly's actually the best part of the show. <laughs> she's, I mean, the actress, she's from Reno 911 and she's some other so things. She's so awesome. Yeah, she, she's great. Uh, if you don't know what the Goldbergs is, it's basically set in the 80s, not in a specific year. Mm-mm. It's 80 something. Uh, they reference basically a bunch of 80s movies, uh, video games. Um, the main character, Adam, basically has a video camera that makes him special. Yeah, I mean, uh, they do a lot of things, like current events, like where they did the holding hands around the entire world. Right. Um, <laughs> well, and I think what makes it super cool, like puts it over the top for me, is, and I, I listen to Adam Goldberg, who's actually the, the creator of the show and also the main character of the show, or the Adam, character's Adam name. Adam F. Goldberg? Exactly. Uh the main character of the show is named Adam Goldberg, and then the creator is also, I mean, it's his life that he's telling. Um, I think in real life he has two brothers, not a brother and a sister, so that would change a little bit. But the way it went is he went into the offices to pitch it, showed him his home videos, and he was going to name it The Silvers and change the name of people. And they said, no, you can do the show if you call the Goldbergs and you make it about make it your you. family. Um, so at the end of episodes, he'll show something he filmed as a kid, which I think is awesome side by side with something they filmed for the show. And it'll be like exactly the same. And it's so, it makes it seem more real and sincere. I think. And just in general, uh, like I said, all the actors are great and everything, but I think that's the part that makes it cool. You're like, Oh, this guy really lived it for sure. And I mean, the end of season one, I thought they were only going to do one and done because of how long the ending of it was of showing all that video of his, Right, you know, saying you know, thank you, everyone. I'm just like, man, this sucks if we're gonna lose after the first season. But luckily, they've been able to come back. Right. 
All right, so what do you have for your number five? Number five, uh, this was a tough one, but I have to go with Eastbound and Down. Ah, it's great. I mean, Kenny Powers, just obviously it's baseball. I love baseball. Um, but just him being crazy all the time, becoming a, what was the white devil? Um, white flame. White fight. Yeah. White flame. Season two, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just, yeah. everything he does was that outlandish. He dies or fakes his death. Excuse me. Um, comes back in his funeral, blaring music. Um, uh, well the character is basically the character he does in foot fist way. I think it's the name of it where he's like a karate instructor mm-hmm. and he's playing the Kenny powers role. Um, just a different character name. I remember when me and you first saw it, we went to um, our Biggs and Fraternity at LB and Johnny's house, yep. and they happened to have the DVD of season one. And I was like, what the fuck is a show? It's super funny. And I think I went, went home, downloaded it, watched all of them in a day. I and mean, there's only eight episodes, I think, in the first season. Yeah. And we just burned through all of them. Because they're only 30 minute episodes. I've probably not laughed at anything quite as much. <laughs> they are, it's fucking hilarious. Um, I mean, I think you have to be of the right age and mindset and everything For to sure. enjoy it to its fullest. Not kid appropriate. <laughs> right. But it it was super funny. And then I think every – a lot of people disagree. I think every season got a little funnier. I mean, maybe at the end not because it gets – The fifth season. It gets dark. Yeah. But I enjoy that stuff. It does. Like, I enjoy the – he he's sad and he wants to kill himself, but they're still going to throw humor in there and make it real <laughs> awkward. Uh, I think it is um, – best friend kind of uh, <laughs> he's so awesome he, he's awkward in the best way uh, i just love the potato stand at the end that he comes up with all the fixings <laughs> <laughs> yeah or um his mexican wife oh my god that whole thing i mean everything about it's great it's every time good. i hear someone say the word april imagine think of the super hot teacher well actually i'd think of uh the first time he sees her in the show where his back's turned to her and he's like hey april <laughs> And then she's like looking around, like, hey, hey, bro. I it just comes to my mind every time I hear the word. So, oh, man. Uh, I mean, that could have easily been in my top five, but I knew you would include it. For so sure. I left it off. <laughs> I mean, I've still got the drawing you made of Kenny Powers. Oh, yeah. For Hanging up project, I did a portrait bedroom. of Kenny Powers. Um, all right. My number four I have is the newsroom. So I don't think you, I mean, you might have watched a couple just episodes. Just a couple. I, I never did get into it. Um, I think the cast is really good. The opening scene's one of the best scenes that there is. Uh, I wish I could think of the dude's name right now. That's the main character. He's the dude from Dumb and Dumber. Not yep. Jim Carrey, but the other guy, right? Um, all grown up. And basically, it starts off with a college student asking, why is America the best country in the world? And he responds with, we're not. You know, we're 23rd in science, 15th in Like, Goes off on what everything wrong. Um, it was also a different time, politically politically than what we're currently in with Trump. So he was a Republican, but he didn't identify with the Tea Party movement. So he was still a Republican, but seemed more liberal because he wasn't a, a Tea Party guy. And so he's basically uh, runs a new show or he, he's like your Anderson Cooper top guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, has Olivia Munn, who I've always loved Olivia Munn, and she's in it. Uh, just has a good cast in general. Uh, and it's kind of behind the scenes workings of a new station. How they have to fact check things. They get sources in that they want to run, but they don't have it verified. And then I think one season they do run incorrect information. Have to face that backlash. Fake news. Um, Got it. It's just really well done show. Uh, I think it only has three or four seasons, so it doesn't go doesn't overstay its welcome. Right to to fall off too bad. But I remember at the time, like I would have to watch it once there was a new episode. So that was just kind of. I guess my reasoning of including it. It was one of those ones I was like, oh, there's a new newsroom? Well, I'm going to go home and watch the new newsroom. Got it. All right, what do you have for number four? So, number four, Game of Thrones. I mean, honestly. Well, that one is on my list coming up. So, if you want to wait, we can... uh, Go over that? Yeah, just go to your number three. So, The Office. All right, The Office is great. I was going to put it, but again, knew you would put it. Yeah, I just... The first season... Michael Scott hooked me. No, oh, yeah, definitely. Just his antics that he did, and I loved his hating on Toby so much. Um, but the, the it pranks. was also in a time where you could kind of be racist on TV, <laughs> which I know is one good necessarily. He was everything. But he was like everything that was wrong, and they got away with it because it was so dumb. It was. It. I mean, from him uh, calling Oscar out. <laughs> um, 
yeah. Uh, it just, but the pranks is what I loved with, oh, with Jim and Dwight. I was actually talking to, to Koopy yesterday when they're trying to discuss this list. Uh, I think the best part of The Office is Dwight Jim relationship. Not just pranks, but like they're so opposites. Oh, for sure. And then towards the end, like they have friendship moment. But like, I just think that dynamic to me is what like really hooked me. Now I think they have a lot of great side characters like Stanley, Kevin. I mean, I love Kevin. Kevin. It's awesome. I mean, I love every character. There's not a bad character on that show. So I think that's also why. It's For like sure. That. I just the, the working in an office space that some of those pranks you could do. I just like the Jello putting the stapler in Jello. Um, easily in my opinion one of the best ones is where he acts like he Christmas wrapped everything and Dwight walks and goes, "Huh." It'll take me about five minutes to do this and then just falls through it. See, my favorite prank, and I think it's on the episode where Dwight's trying to get Jim fired and then they're going over a list of complaints and then they do like flashbacks, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll say Michael or someone's reading in. It's like, Jim made me hit myself with my own phone. (laughs) And it it was like, what? And then it goes like Jim on the side and then it... It was, like, I penny, put a, it was the penny. He's like, I put a penny in his headset every day <laughs> and just got the weight <laughs> up. And then one day I took them all out. And then he, um, it's so good. Right. It's great. Oh, man. So, uh, and I even say the last season without, uh, without Michael, without Michael is still good. Like I don't, a lot of people I know hate on that. I think it's just as good. Agreed. I, what I liked is that they did bring him back for Dwight's wedding. Right. Um, where Jim's like, Hey, you know, the best man, there's a rule can't be, uh, younger than, uh, the groom, and then he's like, "What can't do this now?" And then Michael Scott walks in. Definitely a tear joker, jerker moment for right. me. Closest definitely it got to work. for sure because most of the time you're just busting your ass. Well, and then they had the woman from the Wire who Michael Scott ends up running off with. You know, and then the guy girl. from the Wire. Yeah, uh, um, Idris Elba. Yeah, yeah, he, he plays Michael Steele. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like when Michael Scott makes his own Michael Scott paper company. <laughs> it's that's so awesome. The There's just so many. We watched a lot of that in college. So. Nonstop. Uh, all right. My number three is Mad Men. I think you suckle with me for the first few seasons. Until, okay. And I always leave, epi- I always leave TV series after someone dies. I don't remember the guy. The um, English guy? Yes, who hung himself. Yeah. So that's probably around season three. That's when four. I was like, all right, I'm, I just. Right. And I just will say it's the most consistent throughout quality wise. Like every episode's good. Uh, I mean, Elizabeth Moss, who plays Peggy, who's on The Handmaid's Tale, which could also be on great. my list. Um, she's really good. The guy who plays Peter is such a douchebag. <laughs> then, like, you hate him, so that means he's really good at his job. And then John Hamm is Donald Draper. Even though, like, sorry, so typically I don't like attractive good looking popular people like i just don't not drawn to that but because he has such a mystery behind him of like what's his real name who is he and all that stuff um and i think the first episode it shows him having sex with some woman Mm -hmm. right some brunette woman and then by the end he comes home to his wife and you're like oh Oh, shit shit. yeah like they do a lot of that um that kind of gets you hooked early on and i mean it's a pretty slow show like i've had people i've suggested it to they're like i just can't get into it but i think if you stick with it it it's really good throughout like i mean i'm gonna have to go back and watch it i mean because i've watched episodes here and there even afterwards but i i just I don't know. It didn't grab me after that anymore. Well, and, you know, my wife, she loves period pieces for the most part. So if anything's set in a decade before where we currently live, she wants to watch it. <laughs> and so we both, we both liked it a lot. Um, I also just find it fascinating when you look at a world without computers, without cell phones, like people could just go off the grid, do whatever. Like, I just think all of that stuff is always fascinating of how did they do this before all this current technology we we rely on right? the amount so, of paper cuts people got ridiculous. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, and so like there's an episode kind of towards the end where they get their first supercomputer. Mm-hmm. It's like the size of this room, right? It's a huge computer. And one dude goes crazy and cuts off his own nipple because he's like, the computers <laughs> are after us. And it's so weird for that show, but it was like a real thing where people were just so scared of computers and I just think they do a really good job of showing all that. You see like uh, Martin Luther King's assassination, how people react. Um, and it's just, you know, the coming of age of women in the workplace. Uh, I'm sure you watched the episode where they drive the lawnmower through the office during a Christmas office party. And you're like, I can't even imagine that, <laughs> happening that would happen. Yeah. But I mean, that's just how it was. Uh, so I really, really love Mad Men. 
All right. So next one, I think we got to talk about Game of Thrones now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my number two is Game of Thrones. Um, honestly, I wanted to put it lower, but I watched the fuck out of Game of Thrones. Um, I've watched every episode a few times, if not mm-hmm. more. Um, I just think Game of Thrones is awesome in general. But and I think me and you both agree we wouldn't love it as much if we haven't read the books. For sure. I mean, I, or maybe my, I would like it more because I personally don't like the last two seasons a whole lot because I don't have that whole book crutch to be like, <laughs> well, they should have done this or whatever. I mean, it was supposed to put out on, like, what, spring of 2015? Something. I don't. It's been so long. I mean, I have lost all uh, hope that hope you're going to get it. That we will ever read another Oh, one. agree. Uh, I would rather him finish the Dunkin' Egg series. He says he's going to be 12 and he's only finished three, but they're only 100 pages each. So I think it's more doable. He's been working on the Winds of Winter for 10 plus years. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever get that. Um, if you don't know about Game of Thrones and you're living under a rock and probably haven't, don't know what a podcast is, so I don't think we really have to, we ain't ex- to worry about that. explain a whole lot. Um, I think the books are a lot better. Agreed. I mean, there's just reading the books and... Ten years ago, I'd slap myself if I said this, but... Right. Well, neither reading, one of us were reader. I mean, I would say reading the Game of Thrones books made me and you both readers. Before yeah. those books, me and you didn't really care about reading. Nope. And what happened was we watched the first season, and I was like, that was so good, I'm going to buy this book. And, and then, then I bought it, and I let you borrow it, and I bought the next one, let you borrow it, and then and we, we just, just did that to read them. until we read all five of them. Um, or all four, and I think the fifth one came out. Yeah. And then we bought, bought that one as new. Uh I mean, the actors and actors are, for the most part, really good. I mean, Peter Dinklage is great. I, I think he kills it. plays Arya is awesome. Jon Snow. I mean, at first I thought he was shitty, but then when you read the books, you're like, no, that's no, how Jon Snow is. Uh, so I think we both love Game of Thrones. It's just such a cliche pick that I don't think either one of us want to be like, Agreed. Yeah, we fucking love it. Uh, <laughs> but it is really good. I mean, it's good enough that I watched... Walking Dead for a little bit, and then watch that. I was like, I hate Walking Dead. It's so fucking stupid. I, I don't watch Walking Dead anymore. Right, and it was partly because I just think Game of Thrones is so much better, such a better story. For sure. In I general. mean, they just have. They don't. It doesn't matter if you're a main character or not. You have a chance of dying, and that's what I think is awesome. Right. Um, in the book, reading the, about the Red Wedding. Just, I, I remember going back and rereading that chapter <laughs> exactly. like four times. I was like, that didn't happen. It was so, and I mean, obviously, when <laughs> that's when you know you're like, okay, everyone is. Able I might to bleep die. that part just in case, you know. Someone doesn't. In case I mean, if they haven't like, watched season one. Uh, I agree, but maybe they don't have HBO. That's but true. they could have rented it or whatever. All right, what do you have for your number? What are you on? Two. Two. Okay. Number two, I have Trailer Park Boys. Trailer Park Boys is great. I have watched, me and my wife both have, um, there's now 11 seasons. We watched the first seven seasons, I would say at least anywhere from 10 to 15 times a piece. Favorite episode is season four, episode four, Green Bastard. Yeah, I remember that one. And then um, my wife says right afterwards with Conky. Is see, Conky's good. <laughs> is season four where Ricky is the trailer park? Yes, supervisor. Where he's the trailer park, and then it opens a scene where they're playing hash hockey. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I will say seasons one and two. I think you could skip. For sure, season one definitely. And should you say the quality is just not there? Um, now I think the most interesting thing. Of, about the show is you don't have to watch any other season to watch a season. Nope. Like season one doesn't have anything to do with two, two doesn't have anything to do with three. Eventually it might get kind of where Later, it does. When it gets to season or uh, uh, eight, you need to know a little bit about it. Right. So I've watched, is eight the first one on Netflix? Very first one. Or yeah. that Netflix. Netflix. Distributed. Yeah. Uh, I watched half of it. Net that they... Right. So I watched half of that season and it was good. It's not against it. I just... I watch a lot of shows, um, as you can see from my list. I originally had like 70 shows. Um, and so I just really never kept with it. Eventually, I'm sure I'll go back. Um, just we watched it so much the first seven seasons. I, didn't, was, I didn't need no, yeah. more seasons of it. Uh, but I think season four is easily the best season. Easily. Uh, when they lose Corey or they lose Trevor? They lose Trevor. So when they lose Trevor, it was kind of a bummer. But then the fact that they have... Um, well, Trevor and Corey are both gone. Corey comes back in season eight. Right. Uh, who's the guy whose belly's always showing? Randy. No, no. 
Randy just has a Phil Collins. On. So Phil Collins really makes up for some of it because at the end, <laughs> I love so Phil awesome. Collins. He's awkward or whatever. Uh, Mustard Tiger. <laughs> But I think Trailer Park Boys is great. I think if you're the type of person that likes to get stoned and watch TV, probably the best thing to watch. Um, super funny. And I think it kind of pioneered the, I don't want to say redneck humor, but like, all right, so if you know how My Name is Earl, it's sort of humor mm -hmm. it has, and then other things kind of in that Trailer vein. Park humor. Like Trailer Park Boys was the first to do it. Mm-hmm. And it was better than was. anybody it's, else at doing that sort of where it's like your main character is so dumb. Like whenever he's talking about a description of something, he'll say, give him the prescription <laughs> and you just lose it. Or he's like NASA owns space. Or if he says, uh, instead of saying, I told you so, he says, I told us so. Right. Like there's so many things. It's awesome. And that I think is going to be probably in television show humor forever now. And they mm -hmm. really seem like the first that I remember that kind of was like, no, this guy's so dumb that it comes back around to being smartly funny. If yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, in this newest season, you find out Ricky's somewhat of a math genius because uh, they, they have that list. Well, <laughs> they have a well, because they ask him about how much money they can make on their, I don't know what it was, we'll say 300 pounds of marijuana that he's growing. And he just rambles off how much it's going to be. And they're like, how did you know that? And he's like, well, for every pound, there's 16 ounces. He goes for every 16 ounces. There's 28 grams in each or 28 grams in each ounce. I charge twelve dollars a gram. This goes up, and they're like, "Where the fuck was this at all times?" He goes, "Why don't you think it, Bubbles tells me? Why don't you think everything is weed?" He goes, "Like, oh, I never thought of that." <laughs> Who <laughs> so, makes the? Is it hash coins? Yes, and hash coins. Because he says, he "Fuck everything. money. <laughs> money can suck my dick." <laughs> I love it. It's so great. All right, what do you have, number one? So, number one, I have got to go with Stargate SG-1. Um, I mean, if I put it in my vows, I feel like I have to have that as number one. I mean, I do love the show. My firstborn son's middle name is off of that show with Daniel Jackson. Um, and it was going to be Tilt because that's your favorite character. It was, but... Your but wife. So good. Yeah, well, we, we discussed it because we thought about naming our secondborn son Paul, um, Teal, but... We thought about the issues he would have to deal with in school. They're getting named. I just, I, that name was... I don't think you could have spelled it the way they do on the show. You would have to spell it like milk with a T. Yeah. Right? So it wouldn't have been exactly... You couldn't have done like T-E-L apostrophe, whatever. C. Yeah. C. Uh, and I think on that... I mean, we lived together at the time. I just happened to watch, I think, the first episode of Stargate Universe. And was like, before we get into this... Let's watch Stargate SG-1. And then yeah. I... The do entire not, summer. Right. I don't do this necessarily anymore because you can pay for stuff easily and watch stuff, but you used to download everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I downloaded all 10 seasons of Stargate SG-1. It's like 200 and something episodes. 213 episodes. Right. And I remember my step-grandmother that lives in Colorado when I was a kid, she would watch it, and I was like, this looks so fucking stupid. I mean, that was honestly my opinion <laughs> of it. And then mainly because I saw Tilk with his gold shit on his head, yes. and I was like, oh, it's one of those stupid adult sci-fi shows that looks dumb right um but we downloaded them by this point we'd already binged watched tens of of you know maybe not quite a hundred yet but tens and tens of oh yeah of shows. for sure so we were used to the binge grind and now i remember we watched all 10 seasons in the month of june yep we just non-stop whenever because neither one of us we were both in college at that point neither one of us uh were in summer school we didn't have I didn't hardly work except for the weekends. Right. I remember just during the week it was nonstop and it I I don't I've never been addicted as much as I had to Stargate issue and that was kind of what clicked for me. I mean entourage obviously. Um but Stargate issue one was just Well and I typically don't like campy stuff. And mm -hmm. Stargate's super campy. It is. I mean it's way cheesy at moments Very and cheesy. dumb, but either way I was like, no, this is cool. Um, I mean, I like sci-fi in general. Um, I wanted to always love Star Wars. I mean, as a kid, I would, I watched all the movies. I went and saw the prequels in theaters. Mm -hmm. I had friends that loved them, and I just never loved Star Wars. And so I guess I saw Stargate as like, I'll get into this. And then I did. So I like the fact it was set in today's world. Yep. It's like, what if our military found a wormhole portal to let you jump to planets? And then it kind of just goes off that. It does. It 
and I know we have discussed it. And it may happen if we get used, if we get comfortable doing this podcast thing and can make it into something. We could easily do a Stargate podcast where just every episode of the podcast is an episode of Stargate, and For we sure. just go into it because there's just so many episodes. And I mean, and we wouldn't have to stop at just Stargate SG One. We could talk about Atlantis and then Universe, obviously. Right? Yeah, I, but, I like Universe more, but I think SG One gets the. For me, the crown of like, well, yeah, there's more of them that originated it. For sure. I mean, they have a lot of plausible things in there. However, there are some very big loopholes that if we do do that, we'll have to right. discuss. But yeah, Stargate. Well, the biggest thing to get over, and it's just for the ease of the TV viewer, is that every alien speaks English. Yes. Except certain moments, <laughs> like when the Jaffa and the Ghoul talk, they talk in Jaffa language. Right. Well, but then, like, people on Earth still speak other languages. It's so yeah, dumb. It's, it's, that part's really dumb. But it would the show would be boring if the whole time they were like, hold on, let's spend 30 minutes to translate. Exactly. So, like, I understand why they do it completely. And I will just say, I didn't love the movie. Which one? The original. Oh, like, the original? Stargate movie. Yeah, with James Spader and Kurt Russell. Right. I just think James Dean Anderson just... Richard Dean Anderson. I'm oh, sorry. Richard Dean Anderson... Uh, also off MacGyver. Right. I just really like his character, and I think that's what, to me, holds the universe together. I just, I feel as if I have a similar mindset of what he would think if I was in right. the military, which is just protect people that need to be, screw everybody else, and the right. politics that come into it. It's, it's Daniel Jackson is definitely my favorite character of the show. Um, for sure. I mean, obviously, I just, I love Teal. Right. Um, but Daniel Jackson. Yeah, yeah, he's not white. <laughs> he's darker. So he you're is. drawn to him. I get it. Um, but it's just, I mean, I, I bought a, a plaque in Tulsa Zoo that says uh, Tech Ma Tech, which is Friends Well Met in Jaffa. Um, I, I just, Stargate, like I said, me and my wife watched it nonstop. Me and you watched it. I, have, I can still go home and turn on an episode. I will know what's going to happen, obviously, but I will still watch it. See, let's see. I would try to rewatch them the last time, maybe a year ago. And there was an episode I was like, I do not remember. And we watched it probably like 10 times each or something we lived together. And I'd be like, what is this episode? So I think every once off, because there's so many, I'll just forget yeah. one. <laughs> yes. Um, but it is definitely one where I could start anywhere. And just keep going. In the season. Because you're going to remember. Yeah, it's the last two seasons I'm not a, the biggest fan of. Or last two. Uh, yeah, I'd say last two. Yeah. Um, I just wasn't a huge fan of. But the rest of them was just amazing right all right so my number one um and this is really just number one because of the importance of my tv viewership afterwards so uh between my first and second year of college what are we looking at oh nothing you're looking over my bad uh, was entourage so i downloaded this is the first Love time it. i learned what torrents were i did not <laughs> know what a torrent was and how you could just download tv shows um, I don't even know how I found out about it, but somehow I stumbled across it, downloaded a program that could do it, and I downloaded the whole first season of Honorage. And then anytime anyone came over, it was like, you want to watch the whole first season of Honorage? It was like eight episodes, 30 minutes each, it and knock it awesome. out quick. Uh, and I I want to say I, the first three seasons, I for sure seen 20 plus times. <laughs> yeah. The ones after that, probably 10, right? Um I think it's just the male fantasy, basically. Oh, yeah. It's for like, sure. especially when you're 18, 19 years old and you're like, I would love to be famous, move to Hollywood with my best friends, and then with my money, we're going to do whatever the fuck we want. And get all this off of a toothpaste commercial. You right. Know what I mean, so I think, I really think at the core of it all, that's why most men like the show. I think there is good parts. I mean, I've, I'm into TV shows and movies and the behind the scenes stuff, so I think all that also fit well. Um, but just in general, it was, oh, it's a group of friends. They've been friends forever, and they got each other's backs, and one of them's making a bunch of money, and he's going to look after the other ones, and they live in a fucking mansion. And I just, I love Johnny Drama. See, I I can't pick, I mean, Vince, who's the, people say Vince is the main character. He's really the main character, probably. Yeah. Um, I will say how the main five characters, so E, Vince, Turtle, Drama, and Ari. Mm -hmm. Vince is probably the worst character. Yeah. But he's still pretty good. For sure. And all the others. I mean, he gets Saul Chagray later on, so. <laughs> right. So, like, I, I I can't really, I mean, Ari's probably my favorite. Yeah, Jeremy but, Piven. I mean, he's a pike, too. Right. Drama's great, Turtle's great, and E's great. I mean, like, every character is a, really good, in my opinion. I just, so. 
Johnny Drama is just so over the top, and that's usually what I am. Just victory! <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like when he wants to get calf implants. <laughs> and it's like a bit, he's like, bro, I'm having surgery. And I'm like, oh, what's wrong? I'm good. I mean, it's. It's elective, elective surgery, and they go that whore out. It's so awesome. I mean, Turtle ruins it because he loses weight. Oh, yeah, for I sure. I mean, it doesn't really ruin it. Um, but also, I mean, they're all about, like, they smoke pot all the time, and that's in college. That's basically what we did. Yep. So it was just like, yeah, that was my spirit show or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, the movie came out. That was the first movie you saw after having a kid. Uh, it was the very um, first one. First time you left your son. <laughs> with somebody else. With somebody else was for y'all to meet us to go watch that movie. Um, a lot of people hated it. I didn't hate it. It was all right. It was just another episode. To me, it was a long, good episode. And it probably took too long. Yeah, it was, the end it was like, of the what, season. two hours? And... No, no, I'm saying from the end oh, of the, the last season to when it came yeah, out. Yeah, it, it was, it was a, quite some time. A quicker turnaround. It but I know, helped. uh, was in the E that broke his foot in production? Uh, I believe it was E. Um, Maybe. he broke his foot in production when they were, they were playing, uh, they were playing football. Um, he broke his foot. That yeah, might have been. I remember there were some things that were holding it up here yep. and there. Um, but I would give Entourage my number one, even though I know it's not the best acted, it's not the best written, any of that. It was just but the first show that I binge watched yeah. and continue to binge watch and all that. Like, I just, I could, that's something I could pick it up anywhere and be like, oh, yeah, I know what happened the episode before this and after this off of this episode. Yeah. Because I just watched it so often. For instance, I've recently been watching This Is Us. Um, pretty okay. Um, and Mandy Moore's in that show. And I know everyone else knows Mandy Moore from like her singing days or whatever. I 100% I'm like, she broke Vince's heart in season two. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the way I think of it. She was acting. That was her playing herself. Mm -hmm. But you're like, screw you, Mandy Fuck Moore. Fuck you, Mandy Moore. You ruined, <laughs> you ruined Vince. That's awesome. All right, so... Our top five lists. Uh, what was yours again? Just so we can have it on record. I'm sure it'll change, but. All right. So, man, my phone went off. That's cool. I'll do mine. So I had The Goldbergs, five, Newsroom, four, Mad Men, three, Game of Thrones, two, and Entourage, one. So five, Eastbound and Down, uh, four was Game of Thrones. We went three, Office, two, TPB, Trailer Park Boys, and one, SG1. All right. I think, I mean, all yours would be like about a top 50. They'd be in there. We'd be in there. Um, and I, I easily, not easily, I could make a top 50 and still be like, fuck, what do I have to leave in there? <laughs> but I don't I know also, if I go to 50. I watch a lot of TV. Yeah. Um, probably more than, than anyone else that I know. All right. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is NBA 2K18. So, I mean, you have played most years of NBA 2K. We have. I would say probably I played every year since 2K09. I think it's the one with Kobe. Could be wrong. Um, but I played, it's the only annualized game I play every year. So I used to play Madden every year. I don't really care about Madden as much these days. Uh, the show used to play every year. It the just show was it's never, the same thing. Right. So NBA 2K series is just currently the only one that I will pre order and I'm getting it first day. Now, the big controversy that has come up, I say I want to say it was a website, um, the Sixth Axis or something, where their reviewer gave it a 3 out of 10, the game, mainly because of microtransactions. Now, I also hate microtransactions. I just think that this game is getting a bad rap compared to other games because it's not like nothing is blocked off because you're not spending money like you don't have to spend money to access some part of the game and that's the way people are pitching it you just people get mad because they have to put in a lot more work to right to get the same thing that people who can just go buy the vc points right and like i said i listen to a lot of video game podcasts um normally their takeaway is they don't mind microtransactions if it's just for cosmetic things but then they'll turn around and get mad that you have to spend these vc which is virtual coins on haircuts but that's a cosmetic, that's a cosmetic thing. thing. So I don't, I mean, it's very hypocritical. Um, a guy named Jim Sterling is real big in the video game industry. He put out a video just blasting it. And so I would say most video game journalists or tastemakers, whatever you want to call them, they haven't really played the game. They just watch this guy's video. Now, if you're saying in general there shouldn't be microtransactions in games, I would love that. Like, I would not mind at all if they just gave you free shit. Yeah. But on this, basically what it is, is when you play games, you get virtual currency or virtual coins, whatever mm -hmm. they call it. Uh, with those coins, you 
upgrade your player. So it's kind of like experience points. Now there's just the option where you can purchase these virtual coins. So the way I look at it is like, so a game like Final Fantasy, right? You can grind through those games to get experience to level up your players. If they gave you an option to buy that experience, yeah, it would cheapen the game, but you're just losing out on the hours of grinding. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's part of the game. Right. So I want to play it. So me, I have I got 5,000 coins because I pre-ordered it. I haven't spent any additional money to get coins. I just play the games, get the coins I have, and build up my player. Can you still use the app to... Yeah, they have a, an app you can has a card game, mm-hmm. which I play all the time. I think you can get like 600 coins a day on on the app. And then eventually, once the NBA season starts, they have a you can pick who wins the game. You'll win 50 coins per which one you pick correctly. So there's plenty of free ways to do this. Right. Now, for $100, I think it is, you get like 35,000 coins or maybe it's 70,000. Some ridiculous number right, that would max your guy out. Now, because I pre-ordered the game, I got it four days early before release. Uh, there were people on the first day whose guys were an 85 overall. Now, you cannot become, you start off as like a 60. So you can't get above 85 without playing games. So I'd even say they have a built-in way to make sure you can't become 100 overall or think 99 is the it. highest. Right, you actually have to play some games to get past that. So yes, I've seen plenty of people that clearly spent a bunch of money so that their guy was as good as he could be day one. I mean, me, I don't do that. But if they want to spend their money on that, maybe it's the only game they play and that makes the game better for them. I just don't really hold a grudge for that. No, but I also couldn't drop $100 to buy some (laughs) virtual coins. Right. So I think the only real beef you can have with it is if you're an online player, and I'm just not. I don't really play people online. I don't go to the My Park mode. Um so if I did that stuff and I'm playing with a guy that's a 60 and these guys are 85s or higher, then yeah, I could kind of see where that's annoying. Me personally, what I did is I started a my GM mode with the Thunder and then I just played those games. So I didn't even touch my my player and I just earned coins through a different mode and then spent them in the my player mode. So that would be my workaround so I didn't progress through the story too quickly on the my player mode. But still have enough coins to... Right, so... I, I've got myself up to, I think I'm a 79 or 80 now. So, I mean, I've, through that and actually playing the game. And how long have you had it? Uh, two, let's see, it came out in September. Let's see what this dates are here. Um, like three weeks. So, within a month, you can get to about where everyone was at on the first day. Right. Yeah, I would say probably about a month. Because I played it a lot at first. I, I don't see an issue with that. If you want to drop $100... And you have the money to do so. I don't see a problem, especially if it doesn't max you out. Right. And I think the, the bigger issue, at least to me and from the people I listen to on these podcasts and YouTube videos, is that this has happened for years. This happens in other games. Like, I remember in the show, you bought ticket. You could purchase tickets or you could earn them. Um, Madden has, I don't think the exact same, that you can't buy experience, but you can spend money on these card packs and their ultimate team mode. And people do that all the time and drop all kinds of money on these. And I have a bigger problem with those sort of games where you're buying like loot crates or card packs, something where you have to spend real money and there's no guarantee for what you're getting. At least here, you know exactly what you're paying for. And it's not like you're getting something that you couldn't get by earning it. It's not like you'd just get right. these certain it, Right, it would be different if it was like you could only get Michael Jordan's jump shot exactly if you paid five real dollars. But that's just not the case here. It's, do you want to put in the time or do you want to give us money to skip that? Now, I think it'll cheapen your game experience if you buy it. For sure. I just think that's a better than other microtransactions in other video games in my opinion. So the way I kind of compare it, or a couple ways. Um, I've also been recently playing Final Fantasy IX, which is a PS1 game that they put out on PS4 recently. Mm-hmm. Um, they have some modes in there where you can turn on where you will deal 9,999 damage every time. From You can just turn that mode on. They have a mode where you it just enhances your battle, makes you better. Mm-hmm. I view that the same as I view people buying coins, and that's free with the game. Like It is just a function of the game on the new systems, but I still view it as, yeah, but that's cheating. 
Agreed. The same way I kind of look at, well, if you're buying 100,000 coins, that's cheating. But you have the option but you to have do the option, it yeah. in, current, in a current game landscape that we're in. Um, also look at like game sharks or game genies. Mm-hmm. So when we were kids, um, we had pe- we knew people had game genies or game sharks. They would get these booklets that have codes. You put in the code and then it would unlock stuff. Unlimited money, unlimited whatever. I didn't. I wasn't at that time like, how dare y'all allow codes for game sharks? No one buy this game. I was just like, I'm not gonna do it because I want the real experience. Agreed. I mean. The one that I liked the most was. Do you remember uh, NFL hits? Yes. Where you had the three ev- before every single game that you had like fifteen seconds to put in a code. In many, uh, that well, that and it was made from the creators, I believe, of Mortal Kombat because you could get one with Raiden heads. Where yeah. your team had Raiden <laughs> heads. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've just heard a lot of people complaining about that. Um, if anyone has uh, something on the contrary that will convince me that it's the worst thing ever, they can totally email us. Let me know what I'm missing about this. But in my opinion, I just don't. I don't think it's as big of a deal as everyone is making it out to be. I, I don't. I, again, if you can earn the coins on your own, but I, I think, in my opinion, if I'm buying a game. For instance, Skyrim. I want to play every single small quest. I want to try to do everything throughout the game. I want to build my character up. But if it's your prerogative to just pay money and increase your guy really fast. So like World of Warcraft, which mean or you have never really gotten into nope. um, any MMOs. But World of Warcraft, on their, their newest expansion, you bought it and then it gave you a code or your guy could just be level 90 immediately. So you didn't have to grind. But no one was like... Fuck that. Well, you know what I mean? It was just like, well, that's their decision as a developer, and people were fine with that. Whereas in me, I was like, I would never want to play it like that. No. If I'm going to play it... Start me level one, let's go. Right. I mean, that's just kind of how I view it. I mean, also, I would say this year, they done a better job than last year with these coins, because um, I know you haven't played this year's yet, but you have played last year's. Yep. Um, so they have badges. So like, you know, if I want to be a corner specialist, where I'm just going to hit the three from the corner at a higher rate, you unlocked it but then you could purchase upgrades with coins this year you can't you have to earn those upgrades so it's like you get experience based on doing these actions so they even cut off certain things that you used to be able to use coins to make you better you can now and people are still complaining about it right even more or something i spent a lot of coin on last year is your my court you could customize it always like to have like the tie-dye court Mm -hmm. and stuff and it was like 5,000 virtual coins. This year, you can choose any of them you want. It's just free. There is no unlocking. It's just whatever you want to do. Now, the thing they added is it now costs for haircuts. Before, you could just do any, any haircut, hairstyle. And you could just do it. Now, that is annoying because I know for me personally, I what am I do to have like a chin strap beard like I have? Mm-hmm. You can't view it before you buy it to see what it looks like on you. So I did buy some facial hair that I'm like, nope, looks fucking shitty. So I wasted <laughs> coins, right? Now, that part sucked. But it was just a few hundred and you earn like a thousand a game or yeah. something. So I just think it's kind of just part of their currency. Like in other games, you literally earn gold for defeating enemies, mm-hmm. right? Or whatever. If they gave you the option to use real money to buy gold, people would do that. I yeah. wouldn't. I know, and I just don't. People think it, wouldn't, no problem. I just don't think it matters as much as everyone wants to act like it's it, ruining the gaming industry. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Well, and then now everyone acts like, well, next year they're going to fix it, and I'm just going to let you know they're not going to change it. They've yeah. done this for a few years, and they're going to make money off of it, so they're not going to do it. Exactly, and the same team makes the WWE 2K games. Mm-hmm. Guarantee this year they're going to have a, oh, you want your guy to be up? You can buy this currency here for real money, and people are going to do it Mm -hmm. because the cash has kind of been let out of the bag. That's just how people are going to play the games. I think I'll always be this type of person that doesn't unless, I mean, you have kids. If I ever have kids and I just don't have the time, but I want to be awesome. Yep, we're going to jump up real fast. (laughs) Maybe I do, right? Um, But at the moment, I have nothing but time. So I'll just play the game and level up the old-fashioned way. I hear you. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, Powell's going to try to explain to me why baseball's cool, and then we're going to talk about $5 Indians because I find it fascinating. (laughs) All right. 
right, and we're back. All right, Pow Wow. So here's my question for you, because you, you love baseball. I do. I have fallen out of love of baseball since I was about 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, A lot so of people do. Why is baseball cool? What makes it good? All that stuff. All right, so, I mean, little backstory, I played baseball for a little over 14 years. Um, little League, high school, a little bit in college. Um, to me, it is obviously a team sport, but the traveling that you do for baseball when you're younger, um, the friendships that you make during that time frame, it, it's just great. But the the play that you get to do, I mean, you're playing three or four games a day. Um, that's the only thing I'm dreading as a parent is being out at 105 degree heat in July, having my kids play baseball. But right. I just think that not only is your uh, – fellow players, that family, like your entire team, your parents and everything. Um, they just travel together. Everyone becomes best friends um, or they hate each other, one of the two. But I think that the most appealing part when it comes to baseball is you don't have to be the tallest. You don't have to be the fastest. Um, you don't have to be the strongest. I mean, look at Jose Altuve, the shortstop for uh, the Houston Astros. He's like five six, five seven, um, and he's just beasting. He was batting over five hundred for a while in the postseason. Well, I would say that in general for baseball, it's the sport that your height, weight, all that stuff matters the least. Agreed. I mean, because it, it does even come if, into play sometimes, but it, it can go either way. So, like, okay, you're tall and strong. You have a huge strike zone. Agree. If you're short, whatever, you might be quick, still bases, small strike zone. And you're able to be compact. I mean, it, I think there's ways that it balances itself around people. Agreed. And I mean, it's uh, it was America's pastime. I don't. I think football is taking that over now. Um, for now, yeah. For now. Um, but I mean, there is a lot less major injuries that comes when it comes to playing baseball. Yeah, you're going to get some. Broken fingers, jam thumbs. Well, um, I think it it is, but it has the most like freak accident injuries. Oh, for sure. Like Especially getting, getting in the face. Hitting in the face. Was a nine on our fast, right. fastball? Like no, that just it does have freak accidents, but they're not near as uh, common. Right. But I, I do think that playing the game just I haven't played it in nine, eight, nine years, and just knowing that you can get out there and. You don't forget any of the fundamentals, and being able to teach a kid that—that's it's just so much fun teaching a kid how to to throw, catch, hit. I mean, that's what you grow up wanting to do with your kid. You want to play catch with them. Right. Um, but I think that being able to play uh, not just in the summer because baseball goes all year round, fall ball, and then the only time that it's really off is in the winter, um, and you've still got tournaments at that point. So I think that you can play year round. You don't have to play football for it. Um, but the biggest thing to me is there is a good opportunity um, to at least be able to play in a school because you're looking at a team has 20 players on each team. Right. Um, there's not a lot of people that pursue baseball. Um, at least when I was in high school, everyone wanted to go towards football more than anything else. Well, and knowing what I know now, I wish I would have cared more because they get paid way more money. There's and they get more, guaranteed in the pros. There's more roster spots to play professionally than any other sport because you are. have all the minor league. I know minor league players don't get paid a lot. But they still get paid $60,000. Right. If I get paid 60000 to go play a game, that would that'd be awesome. Agreed. And I mean, just, I don't know, the camaraderie that comes with it and being able to go back and uh, reminisce in those days is great. I just... I think that, again, it doesn't matter how strong you are, but it also doesn't matter your age. I mean, people play softball um, even afterwards, um, especially wash-up people like myself that want to relive those glory days and go play some softball. You can. Um, but I just think all around that it, it's going to move back towards America's pastime because of the CTE issue um, that goes on in the NFL. Um, and, again, you can learn to play, and you can not be super athletic, and you can still be a decent baseball player. Right. Um, I can put you at first base as long as you can put your foot on a bag and catch a ball. Um, <laughs> that, I mean, you know what I mean? That's just – I play with a whole bunch of different players, and I think that's a great thing is when you're younger, you go to do things like the World Series. Because when you're playing football when you're younger, you stop at maybe a Little League's championship. Right. Um, or if you're really good, you get to play for your state or whatever when you're younger. Um, but literally, you can go to World Series, go to tournaments, and right. it's just... Well, I know you do a Little League World Series. I have another friend, um, 
who he moved from our small town to a team in Dallas for a few years. He went to the Little League World Series, and he always talked about it was just super fun. You collect pens from yeah, that's that's the best something. part. I mean, I remember when I got to collect my pen from Team Pepsi. Now that was twelve and under. Those kids look like they were twenty five. Probably were. <laughs> I mean, kids coming in with mustaches. I will say, ridiculous. the one thing that really does stick out to me about baseball as a kid is it was the only sport you had to provide a birth certificate when you yes. signed up. Like, I played football in fifth grade. I played. And the coaches had to have them at each game because if they it's, thought it's so strange. Wasn't, it's, but I think the, the most fun is the parents. Oh, yeah. Because those people get nuts. I mean, my mom was, she was kicked oh, out of I don't know how many imagine. ballparks. Yeah. I mean, she just said things like, you know, uh, Blue, get off your knees and quit blowing the game. I mean, just, totally I'm a appro- catcher. Totally appropriate for a little league game. <laughs> for sure. I'm a catcher, so the ump's like, who is this crazy woman? I don't know, because I'm not going to admit that. And that's the other thing. So, talking about it, I remember, you know, because I played up through, I guess, Pee Wees is when I quit. I just didn't want to do it anymore. Maybe Midgets, whichever one's last. Because there's, it goes T-ball, Coach Pitch, Pee Wees, then Midget. I believe so. So anyway, I played, you know, there's a coach pitch and then where you go on where people are pitching to you that mm-hmm. aren't coaches. I played that. And then me and you met at a summer camp and then I went to a summer camp, didn't play baseball. And then that, after that, I came back and was like, oh yeah, that was awesome. I didn't have to, <laughs> you to practice I didn't every have day. to go to 30 fucking baseball games this summer. And so I just didn't do it anymore. It's kind of, I mean, where you, I, fell out. I do think you have to be more involved in baseball than most other sports. Right. Because you have a lot of games, even in Little League, whereas football you have like eight. Um, but Little League, if you were not playing, you're practicing. Right. I mean, it's almost a seven-day-a-week job well, for little kids. I think what made baseball different for me compared to other sports that I played was baseball was the only sport where practice was more fun than games. Yeah. At least to me. And I learned I wasn't all that competitive through baseball because my – Second year of coach pitch, I believe it was, we had enough people in my small town because my town's real small, so you normally just have one team for your age range. We had too many people, so that split us to Warica Red and Warica White. Um, all my friends were on Warica Red, and then I was the only – I'm going to say I was good, but I was like in the top half of good yeah. players right? um, that I had to go to Warica White. And then the, this preacher was our coach who had never – Never, never coached. Never games coach like, anything. But his son probably played. His son was in there, yep. and then I was the only decent player on our team. See, and, and, and that's I the worst had, thing. No, no, I disagree. I had more fun that year, really, than I ever had on a team that was good because I was the best. For sure, I got to like that four hole. I mean, my coach threw me curveballs in coach pitch, which is stupid. But hit to him, it was a whole. We're gonna have fun out here, and so he would throw me a curveball, and I would hit it and be like, "Fuck yeah!" Yeah. <laughs> um, we didn't win any games. We See, went, I, we went completely defeated. But I had more fun that year than I ever had before or after. Whenever we were like competitive. See, and that, I'm super competitive, so I don't think I could I could do that. Right. But I mean, I do think that's another thing with with baseball is one person cannot win the game every right. game for you. I mean, you need a, a team. To win that game. Um, yeah, when you're literally, you can have the kid who throws 65 miles an hour and 12 and under. And yeah, he's going to win just about every game he pitches. But there's always a inning pitch limit. Every game, right? It's like, well, you pitch a full five innings, you have to be off for three games well, or some craziness. And something I, I learned that year, um, I mean, there was one other decent kid um, who ended up becoming one of my best friends because we were the only two that were half decent. Mm-hmm. And so we hung out all that summer. And then when the school year started, we're like, oh, we're, we're friends. Yeah. You know? um, was this whole, if someone scored more than five runs in an inning, then they had to call the game. And I'd be like, but we could score more than five runs the next day. It was the stupidest fucking rule. And I remember that really pissed me off. That's crazy, yeah. I mean, they usually have run rules because it's like uh, 15 after three, uh, 10 after four, and eight after five or something like that. Like, I remember this pretty... I'm pretty sure I remember it correctly. Like, it could be 0-0 zero, zero going the fourth inning, and if the other team scored six runs that inning off of like a... A triple that mm-hmm. drove in, you know, the last two and put him at six. And like, all right, game over. They scored six that inning. That's crazy. And you'd be like, what? See, at that point, my mom would be flipping out, pulling her earrings out, <laughs> ready to throw some bows. <laughs> Just, it, it wouldn't work. But I remember I liked baseball growing up. Uh, I think it's, it's so passive. Mm-hmm. So like, I think, um, and I'm sure I'll mention this future. 
it had its heyday when newspapers were popular because a box score can be easily read in newspaper. You can see a breakdown of inning by inning, hits and errors and runs, and you pretty much know what happened. Yeah. Um, I think once we moved on to radio, it was, you know, it's it's okay on radio. I will say radio announcers for baseball are probably the most talented because they have so much dead air to just talk about nothing. Yeah. Um, And they pull it off for the most part. TV, okay, but compared to other sports, it's TV product just isn't that fun. It's not fun to watch six scoreless innings. It's not. I mean, luckily the postseason this year has been great to watch. Um, But agreed. I mean, especially the games that are 1-0. I mean, I'm a huge baseball fan, but... I mean, I can watch baseball most of the day, but there, uh, there is a huge difference also at watching it at your house and compared to watching it at the game, obviously. Right. I mean, I could watch any game at the game, no matter what the score is. But at the house, if it's a 0-0 ball game going into the ninth, it's kind of... Right. You just... There's not as... Um, just kind of boring. Kind of like soccer. When soccer yeah. gets to 0-0 and you're like, oh, shit, they can end on a draw. <laughs> <laughs> at least baseball keeps playing. But then you get like five hour games and you're like, what? Some of those the hell? sixteen inning games, man. Yeah. Oh, it's so it, that gets that gets nuts. Um, I'm trying to think, if there's any other random baseball things? I mean, it was just what you. I think the reason, and probably still the reason why it's somewhat popular, is it's the sport you can start the youngest. Uh huh. So I started five years old, got on a t-ball team. Hit my first home run in T-ball because some kids tripped over themselves in the outfield or <laughs> and in the field home run. Um, and it's basically, for at least where I lived, that was the only sport you could play up until football in the fifth grade. That's when our football started was fifth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, we had soccer one year, and then they kicked us out of the soccer league because we went undefeated, and we were from a different county than the soccer league county and some political shit where parents got mad. But in general... Like little league bullshit. <laughs> right. So, like, in general... That's why you like it as a kid is because it's your only only thing only you can option. really do. Um, and that was kind of before the Internet was a real thing. And yeah, I mean, I love video games, but I was like yard sale shopping video games. I, wasn't, <laughs> I didn't have all kinds of easy entertainment at my fingertips. And then also, and I'm sure I mean, you grew up in a bigger town for sure, but I'm sure you all did it where everyone would just get it because everyone had a glove and you're like, Oh, we're going down the lot. We're going to yep, play. We're all going to play. Yeah. And then you, that's how you spent your Saturday for sure. And I mean, I also think that when we were growing up, that was, they call it the steroid era. I call it some of the best times of baseball. Yeah. Um, I mean, I still remember, and I could be completely wrong. I feel like it was the Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire home run race. And then like survivor season one was like around the same time. Yeah. Um, almost was like in fourth grade maybe. And, like, that's all anyone talked about were those two things. Did you yep. see Survivor? Do you see Sammy Sosa hit the home yep. run? And I just wanted Sammy Sosa to win so bad for whatever reason. Um, I just loved his home run dance. Like, I just, yeah. it was so awesome. And fucking Mark McGuire crying on the stand. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. Um, all right, any other or favorite baseball player? I think we had the same favorite baseball player, which is kind of... King Griffey Jr. King Griffey Jr., because he was... I won't say he was the only superstar, but he was like just the biggest superstar because he looked like a kid, mm-hmm. and that dog was his nickname. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, it, uh, I he mean, should have been the first Hall of Fame MLB player to get a hundred percent votes. It's crazy; two people would not put him into the Hall of Fame first bout. Uh, I think if he say before he went to the Reds and all that, mm-hmm. if he would have gotten a career-ending injury, he would have been a hundred percent. But the fact that he went on to have a few injury plague seasons, but I mean, some still people he are going to six hundred home runs. I, I mean, I agree with you. I'm just saying, I think that's why where people are like, yeah, but he wasn't perfect, and See, that's I, why he didn't. I just, in my opinion, if Pudge is first ballot, and again, everyone knew King Griffey Jr. was going first ballot. Yeah, I just think some people want to be a stickler and be like, yeah, I was one who voted. Well, nonsense. and saying the steroid era, no one was ever going to claim. Ken Griffey did steroids. No, <laughs> because never. he, I mean, he was a professional athlete, so he's physically fit, but he wasn't like jacked. No, he, he was has, long and slender until he went to the Reds, and then he started getting a little bit bigger. Right, well, and he always had round face disease or whatever they call it, right? <laughs> like Carmelo and some other yep. basketball players, where it's like because he had a chubby cheeks, everyone was just like, "Oh, he's not he's that okay. in shape, right?" So, yeah, he didn't have that massive head like Barry Bonds. Oh yeah, Barry Bonds was, all, was a whole other thing. We'll have to do some more baseball talk. Like, I don't love baseball, but I know enough about it yep. that we could at least discuss it here. And they might do our five favorite baseball players sometime or something. For sure. Um, 
All right. So another thing I wanted to bring up, and it might be our last topic, um, is I told you about this six, seven months ago, maybe because yeah. I read something about it, um, this term $5 Indians. Now, again, you're a native Indian guy mm -hmm. um, of Creek Nation. Um, and ever since I met you, because we met at uh, Upper Bound Math Science, Nerd, Nerd Camp, Camp is what we call it. <laughs> um, we did. We went to see a Cherokee, went to some Cherokee place. In Tahlequah, yes. And we looked around their grounds at a play and some shit. And you just the whole time were like, these fucking white people. <laughs> <laughs> and so you always seem to have this. I don't think it's like a legitimate grop. It's just like you're you're in the know. And it was something funny for you to say. Yeah. Of, of There's so many white, especially where we live in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that are blonde hair, blue eyed white people who are like, I'm Indian. I have a card. And then I'm like, you don't look any more Indian than I do. And I don't have any card. And sure, I get somewhat jealous because they get free education, free food, free housing, free jobs. They pretty much get handed everything, especially where we're at the head of Chickasaw Nation here. They do um, great for their people. I wish I had a card or I would really help my life out. Um, so there was this thing called $5 Indians that I came across and just thought I'd share with you. Um, so the Dawes Rolls, am I pronouncing that right? Mm -hmm. um, they have some dates here, but I don't think it's that important to be too specific. Where I'm reading this at, in case anyone wants to check it out, is on Indian Country Today, which I guess is a magazine, website, maybe a combination of the both. Um, so whenever they put that in effect, late 1800s, it was basically to register. They had to get the native population under control as far because this was a time where interracial relationships were happening. White people were with Indian women and black people were with Indian women and Indian men were with other people. So they just wanted to get a hold on who is Indian because they had they signed some things of where they were going to guarantee give them land. And they're getting sovereign as well. Right. And so they'd be sorry. So. They had to start being, they had government agents who went around, signed people up. They listened to their testimony, read their, whatever they wrote. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of Indians at the time couldn't, couldn't write. I mean, a lot of people couldn't, couldn't write. Couldn't write in general, yeah. Um, so you go tell them your story, they would assign you something. So something talks about here is there are people that are siblings that just went to different agents and they came out with different percentages. So like Autumn, mm -hmm. um, brief story, you have two white siblings and two Indian siblings. I do. Um, so... Autumn, who is your Indian sister, she, like, if y'all two went to different agents this time period, they might come around saying, you're three-fourths and she's half. For no reason. Like, y'all would tell the exact same story. These people just, they weren't scientifically doing anything, They're right? They're just writing down numbers. Just writing <laughs> down stuff. So, a lot of it wasn't even that factual. It was just, I mean, there's lots of human error at this time. Uh, but someone like me in this time period, I'd go to that same government agent and say, I will give you five dollars if you say I'm half Indian or full blood or whatever. And then normally, because these are human beings with very little oversight, they're like, all right, give me that five dollars. And then that's where the term five dollar Indians came from. So most of these people that you're like, you're not Indian, you're probably correct. <laughs> they're not. They're just they gave someone five dollars and they got a piece of paper that now is worth thousands if not yeah. a million dollars over your lifetime i'll say a million over your lifetime for sure for all the benefits health care um all the especially things that the you healthcare get system, especially now right for all the benefits you get for being indian and being on the rolls mm -hmm. um definitely worth their investment so a lot of people look at these guys as you know white men only and i'm sure there were other race of people that did it um i'm sure mexicans right yeah um black people that were lighters i'm sure a lot of people are like i'm trying to get free land they're giving out parcels of land because with this Dawes roll they they took all the indian land mm -hmm. and then they basically you signed up and we guarantee to give you a little piece of it yeah it was kind of a, another big deal and now it's a great trade-off right <laughs> um and so i know your family somewhat disagreed but like i have a grandfather who is at least a quarter i mean and he looks it you met him mm -hmm. uh, bob um but he's never been on a register and he doesn't care to now his kids got on it um, he's my step grandfather, by the way, so not me. But his kids got on it because his first wife was on the rolls, but she looks as wide as me. Yeah. But they got their Indian card from her, whereas my grandpa's a fairly tan fella, and, and he, he doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of Indians didn't sign up because they didn't trust the government or just didn't want to do it. Agree. Um, now some people say, well, they didn't because they didn't want to be identified as Indian. I'm sure 
every scenario happened at the time. Agreed. I mean, I don't think any one happened. I mean, my family, I mean, you know their opinion, that they didn't want to go through the hardships that they knew would be coming up. Um, I don't know. I, I think that the mistrust in the government easily is founded um, when it comes to this situation. I mean, there hasn't been a treaty not broken by the Agreed. American government to the native people. It's it's beyond terrible. Now, I mean, you've I've totally talked to you about this before, and so a lot of people think it's super racist, but just my, as a matter of fact, sort of way, I don't necessarily think they should have sovereignty and get all this free stuff because... Like, okay, so you're Creek. The mm-hmm. Creek Nation doesn't have their army that they go and fight for people, or they don't do, like, they just get tax breaks, and they get free stuff, and they get to put casinos where other people couldn't. Like, mm-hmm. it is almost nothing but advantages. Really? And I I mean, the same way I'm like, I don't think we should give reparations for former ancestors of slaves, mainly because we could barely prove that, tracking it back. Mm-hmm. Of it, we're, I think the easiest way to give a racism is like, hey, everyone, quit getting special treatment and stop getting negative treatment. And let's just be equal for a minute, yeah. and then we'll figure this out. And so I think when we have things like this, it's it just going to keep it. Right. It's, so even though it is beneficial, I do see it as it's going to cause a divide because there are going to be jealous people. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I mean, I know one thing. We went to this nerd camp. Uh, we had some Navajo camp mates. From the reservation. True and right. they would talk about the exact opposite, where it was like they would be at their school – and they had a room for if you were white and not native, they would give you supplies because it was so rare for those people to exist. Yeah. And whereas in here, we have like, oh, you're Indian or native. You get the we're J-O-M, gonna... Jonathan O'Malley. So it's different everywhere. But I'm like, if we just didn't have any of that and everyone was just equal across the board, it would be better. Now, I get like systematic racism, how you're already in a worse position, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I just find all that stuff fascinating. So anyway, $5 Indians, if you've heard the term, or if you see someone who claims they're Indian and they don't look like it at all, there's, a good, a, $5 Indian. there's a good chance <laughs> their ancestors paid $5 for a piece of paper that said they were Indian so they could get some land. And I mean, we're from the territory in which that happened. Like Oklahoma is where the land run was. Yeah. Um, I said, we live in Chickasaw Nation. My hometown, Chickasaw Nation, ends in the middle of it. There's like a sign in my town that says leaving Chickasaw Nation. And there's no difference from one side to... I mean, it's just the town. um, It stops. Now, Chickasaw Nation, they... At least, uh, they've been... Of all here in Oklahoma, of all the nations, they are the most prosperous. Um, But I think it's because of the governor that they have. Bill Anatubby is just... Fantastic. Well, I mean, they do. We live in Ada, Oklahoma. I think they do a great job keeping this place looking good. I have nothing negative to say about it. I mean, right now I'm on the job hunt, and I think it's annoying if I go to their website. They can straight up say, Indians get preferential treatment for jobs. Where I think if I had a company and I was like, whites get preferential treatment, it's, that's there's so always fucked. an argument. It is. Right. And. <laughs> Or let's go the other way. If someone was black and they're like, black people get preferential treatment. I just don't think that's right. Agree. I mean, I, I can see it. Um, and I think something else me and you have talked about, like, we're both fairly liberal. Mm-hmm. I'm not like all the way down with socialism. I think there's parts around. I think we have to go into it if we're going to have robots making all of our stuff in the future. <laughs> but looking here at the Chickasaw Nation, I think you can see, or reservations across the country, you can see what the problem with socialism is. Yeah. So like here in general, they have uh, housing set up Mm -hmm. and we have met plenty of people. They're like, well, if they're going to give me a house and give me food and take care of healthcare and childcare, why do I need a job? And then they're just lazy. Not all. I mean, you are Indian. You want a job and all that, but there are plenty who, when that system's available, will take advantage. I'm not thinking in any race or in any, Right. Scenario, they do try to take advantage. But yeah, it, it is uh, demoralizing to see it sometimes. It's just, right. take a little bit of pride. Right. You you do get some benefits, and they are great. I mean, healthcare alone is amazing. I mean, we've had two children in Chickasaw Nation Hospital, and it's just fantastic. Um, but just to not want to do anything because somebody else is taking care of you is, to me, not at all the native way whatsoever. Right. I mean, their whole thing was, I mean, you had a... I'm probably don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but in general, from what I understand, is people had their jobs. So, like, some were hunters, some were gatherers, or whatever, mm-hmm. and some people 
tanned the deer hides and some people made the jewelry and so, like everyone had their job. It was, their, it was their company. Right. They contributed to the wellness of everyone. And maybe that can't happen now because of the way capitalism kind of is. And I mean, maybe I'm wrong. To me, these tribes are clearly in the making money business. I mean, that's what their goal is. They're just like any other business. How can we make more money? I agree. I and mean, that's I, what they're going to do. And so maybe it's just easier for them to give people money to stay out of the way. It as may opposed be. to like, no, well, let's give you, you try a work. job. Yeah. I mean, I know like I've heard things on the radio around here of, you know, uh, the chickens all our ancestors didn't want you know you to be lazy they were talking about getting out and working out every day that's not the Chickasaw way is to sit around and right. be unhealthy and this is going to kind of divulge into just indian topics in general i also find it fascinating that a lot of the southern tribes are heavier set people yeah and they get drunk easier right so like and that's just because the evolutionary wise they ran so much more mm -hmm. and you didn't have alcohol until like white people brought over some some alcohol so like you see people falling susceptible to being alcoholics mm -hmm. or being extremely overweight because their lifestyle today is so much different than what it was just a thousand years ago whereas in white people and other cultures as well um like certain asian cultures they've been used to this lifestyle a little more the more westernized I mean, even, sort of even 300 years ago Right. 400. I mean, because Creek Nation, we came from uh, the Georgia area. And I mean, that's you talk about you have no air conditioner, you're out running around, getting your food. And then now you sit in a 70 degree house, go right. pick up some McDonald's and get as much free food you get on from uh, food stamps or wherever else you get it from. I agree. It, it is uh, it is crazy. But I do think uh, one area that does help with that is powwows. Yeah, I mean, because it literally will keep you in shape. Right. You and, have no option. And I'd never been to a powwow until we were in college. I went and saw you dance yep. in one. Um, and then I worked with an Indian guy um, on the grounds crew in college. And it was super fascinating to me because I didn't know any about any of this until he brought it up that I asked you. Is when I said I was going to go watch you do a powwow, he was like, heathen. He's going against God. And oh there was my this. God. There was this whole thing, and when like your grandma was younger, mm -hmm. where like that was idolizing false gods. Yeah, I mean, and so since were... it was against the Bible, yeah, then they you couldn't do it because I mean most minorities in in America were forced into Christianity, whether it be slaves being tied to a post, being whipped till they said they believed in the Bible. Um, or being the only book they're allowed to read, and so therefore they were going to learn how to, to read. Schools to right, and then Indians were literally ripped from their families, the children, yeah. and then sent to these boarding schools that were ran like that. So I just didn't know anything about that. And it's still kind of prevalent today where some people still uphold to that, like Indians. They're like, we will not participate because that's against God. And to me, it's crazy. Because it, it's a celebration, first off. This is not well, some demonic we, we ritual. We went to two. One of the two, or I've been to two now. One of the two I went to, they prayed to Jesus at the start of it. Yep, they did. The other one, they left it kind of more... Creator. Yeah, they said creator, so you could kind of fill in your own blanks. And I think that's also another reason why people became Christians, is because most Native communities believe in there is a creator right. of everything. And I mean, it goes very well with Christianity, um, just changing a few names. Well, and I think the... Being the five civilized tribes, you know, that's what we have here in Oklahoma, um, which is such it's a terrible such a, way to say it. A horrible way to say it compared to talking about any other tribe. Agreed. Right? Um, but tribes that are on reservations, like the Navajos we met, mm -hmm. they don't have the same sort of tie to the Bible. No, they don't. Not at all. They like JP would tell us stories of skinwalkers and how there's five worlds and we're on the fifth world and you yeah. recycle through. Skinwalkers, some scary stuff. I mean, I, I don't know this well. I think it's just a collection of shamans who spend their life scaring the fuck out of people. It <laughs> could. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I have cousins that are northern tribe, and they have a north, south, east, and west. Um, I just, I it does get a little uh, crazy that before every, most powers, at least in Oklahoma, they do pray to God. Some of them do creator, um, but a lot of them are talking about going to church um, well, and uh, speaking of church and, and Indians here, um, my wife has a friend, won't say names, of course, um, who's dating 
this Indian guy, and they go to an Indian Christian yeah. church. A Baptist church, I'm assuming. And I think, and because she, I mean, she's not even white, white. I mean, like, she looks white, she but does. I'm pretty sure she has a card. Mm-hmm. But they make her sit on the back row because she doesn't look Indian enough. And, like, so she can't even sit with her boyfriend when they go to church. Like, they're they're a little more, kind of like the way Mexican Catholics are a little more uh, rigid with their beliefs than yes. white Catholics that we know. Um, it seems to be the same way. So, like, Indian Christians or Christian Indians, however you want to say it, they even hold on to certain things that, like, white Christians or mainstream Christians are like, it's fine. It's okay. But we, they kind of hold in even a, more because I think they more recently were held to these boarding school standards. Agreed. And I mean, my my great grandmother, that she went to one of those schools and it was terrible. I mean, I just, I could imagine having to go through that getting ripped away and you just are forced to change your beliefs. Right. In general. And then now it's okay to accept those beliefs because it's happened long enough that those people aren't around anymore, and so it's okay just to act like none of that even happened. Yeah, I mean, it's easier. <laughs> it's just easier that way for people. It, it is It is crazy, but I do want to mention one thing about you going to the powwow. So I do think it's crazy that both times you went to a powwow, an eagle feather has hit the floor. And apparently uh, that's rare. It, it is. I mean, it, that means at least uh, with us that a warrior has passed, um, and it's not a... Uh, a good thing obviously whatsoever but i just find it very strange at both times you went right oh and speaking of random uh native myths or i don't know if it's myths or i was probably derogatory to say that um beliefs uh so we mentioned briefly this jp guy we knew from new mexico um navajo reservation and he he taught us all kinds of stuff well yeah told us about a lot of things um he hated me because i made him laugh a lot and apparently laughing out loud is not allowed in his village where he was from so he would hang out with me for a month, go home, laugh out loud, and then get whipped. And I always felt horrible for that. Yeah. Um, but they had some legend or story or rhyme song, something, of if you pass the certain rivers and mountains, then some, someone in your family would die. And Every then year all they would... three years that we went to camp together, someone in his family died. It was terrible. And then he, he I mean, he had me fully bond in. Like, yeah. if anyone's right, y'all are right, man. <laughs> like, Because, I mean, it happened. Oh, I love JP. He's doing good things for his nation. Yeah, I've never, I saw him on Facebook uh, at his office doing something yeah. and all that. All right, so I try to say every week we would briefly touch on LV. Not a whole lot of news since last week uh, when we talked. Uh, he's writing me on the emails. He's real excited about the Thunder and about OU Sooners, but at that email was sent in the middle of the Sooners game in which they <laughs> lost. Uh so I'm sure he's even more pissed now. He's super pissed. I, I asked him for a little clarity on him being Muslim. Like, wait, are you for real Muslim or like you get better food Muslim? Um, from what I understand, it's he it doesn't get better food, but he gets to decide when he eats his food. So He gets some freedom. Right. So because he can decide when he gets to eat that, he can stretch it out, that has led to him becoming Muslim in jail. And they get, and he told me they give him kosher meals, and I was like, in my I'm like, you know, kosher is a Jewish term. I believe what you're looking for is halal. If I'm, you know, if I remembered correctly, and you're back. Well, yeah, it's halal, but they just write kosher on everything. So. <laughs> it's all the same. That's what it is. Yeah, it's all the same. And I think that's so funny because it's so like those people have been warring forever, right? And so it's just like, and jails are like, fuck it. It's all. It's they're all, all the, the same. same. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, anything else we need to talk about before we wrap it up here? Uh, no, man, I don't think that's it. All right, well, uh, I think we've decided we're going to wait and put out all three episodes at once. So if you heard yep. this one, then episode one and three should be available as well. Um, please like, subscribe to anything you can. Um, our goal would be just to get people who like us and want to hear us out. Um, and again, if you want to email any comments, questions, concerns, any of that, uh, that is the powwow with Mo at gmail.com. Mo does not have an E on it. Um, and we look forward to the next episode. Remember, two wrongs don't make a right, but three lefts do.